Greetings, neighbors. This is Reflections, the show sponsored by the Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where we, all of us together, do God's work with human hands. My name is Gregory Waldrop, and I'm the pastor at Fountain Avenue United Methodist Church, and I'm one of your co-hosts for this show, along with Karen Winkle, who's the pastor at the United Church of Paducah. Welcome, Karen. Good to see you, Gregory. Yeah. Good, good to have you with us today. We're excited about our program. We have with us the very Reverend Ellen Ekevog, who um, is an Episcopal priest in Western Kentucky, serving three different congregations. And we're talking with her today about ministry, one of the ministries that she's involved in, which is ministry to young adults. So I will say you're from Grace mm -hmm. Episcopal, you're from Trinity Fulton, and from St. Paul's and Hickman. And how you stitch all that together is a subject of a whole different <laughs> program. But welcome. It's Thank good to you. Have you with it's us, good Ellen. to be here. It's good to be here. Mm -hmm. Very okay. glad you're here. Right. One of the things that um, that I'm aware of is that fewer and fewer people who are uh, young are entering seminary. So that you're involved in ministry to young adults, and you yourself are a mm -hmm. young adult, is um, is less common than it might have been. Yeah, I think there's been a recent trend for um, younger people, especially people who are right out of college or a year or two out of college, to go to seminary. In my class, the majority of the people were in their 20s or early 30s. Um, so that's a huge difference in what the seminary population was in the past. So I think more and more it used to be that... Um, bishops, and especially in my traditions, bishops thought that um, you needed to have a, f a first career um, before you went in into the ministry, and now uh, they don't necessarily think that. They think that you can go out of college and for the ministry to be your, your vocation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has that been for you to make that transition from, from your seminary experience into n n not even one parish, but three? Um, well, I, seminary is, uh, as you all know, is an experience of itself. Um, and what happens in the Diocese of Kentucky is the Bishop of Kentucky places you in your first ministry. Um, and there was a need for someone to come and serve uh, Trinity Fulton and St. Paul's Hickman. Um, and Grace Episcopal Church here in Paducah sort of worked with them. And so that's how they brought me in. Um, and like any job that you start off with, uh, any vocation, you know, you have to learn how to do it. It's yeah, one thing to read rhythms. about it. It's yeah. another thing to do it. And um, so I think it's just been kind of one of those normal transition experiences where o over the past three years, I've kind of been able to develop my own style and understanding of, of what I do in each different setting. Well... Obviously, um, one of the things that you're well known for around is your outreach to the young adults, to the 20-somethings and 30-somethings. Tell us some of the things you've done uh, to sort of address, to reach out to that age group. Well, um, I guess I started out offering um, what I call pub theology, which is sort of off the idea originally off the Catholic Church which is theology on tap except that pub theology it's a weekly meeting um, usually uh, Wednesday nights at Jeremiah's about seven o'clock um, on Broadway and I just invite people to attend and usually there's a theological topic that we discuss. We began with, I actually asked a few of the young adults well what is it that you want to talk about and they said the Nicene Creed Mm -hmm. which really surprised me. And that really was a lot of fervor <laughs> for discussion and um, found out all kinds of, of interesting things. But what's important to me about that group of people is that 
we can have theological conversation that doesn't necessarily, where we don't necessarily have to agree, where we all understand that we're searching uh, and that we're on this journey and that we're trying to figure out what it is that God's calling us to do and, and believe. And so there's an understanding that even though we may have disagreements, they're always respectful conversations. So um, we meet once a week and we've talked about the Nicene Creed. Um, we've done some Bible study. Uh, we had a series about saints. We just ended up, we did a Lenten book study, one of our first book studies on the shack, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so usually I don't really have to do much but come up with the topic. Um, and, and they're kind of ready for discussion. So it's, it's, it's very enriching for me, too, because it kind of tests my own uh, belief in, yeah. and, and also, you know, my own background. Right. And see if the tradition can hold up. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, kind of, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, yeah, we do, so we do that. That's probably the major the major piece that we do each week. And I find it's helpful not to meet at church. Um, it's kind of easier to just, where everyone can sort of just kick back, get something to eat, get something to drink, um, and people kind of come in. And so it's a more open forum for folks. There's just space in the back that's kind of your own. Yeah, we kind of, we've kind of claimed a space. And um, it's pretty hard to move us from that. It's it's kind yeah, of yeah. Sort of your favorite pews. Kind yeah, of it, we yeah we have our favorite pew yeah. and uh, and you know it's it sometimes it's five people and sometimes it's twenty people and it just you know whatever's going on and it depends on schedules and lots of young adults are very busy too and trying to be parents and both you know right. husband and wife working so and it isn't just folks from from Grace Episcopal. No. It's a variety of people. It is a variety of people. Um, sometimes um, with someone from Baptist backgrounds, a lot of people who have no religious affiliation. Um, we often have special guests. And um, so it's, it's not a denominational uh, group necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of diversity in terms of opinions. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, approaches to the faith generally. Exactly. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Well, the group, you know, I don't have any point of reference, but I, I was invited a couple times, and the the thing that um, really struck me was how respectful people were of one another. That was one thing. Just um, it didn't feel like there was anything at stake. Yeah. Um, and so I found that very enlivening, but also the depth of thinking and, and reflecting, um, would you say that's typical or is that something special about that group? Do you think if you were doing something similar in Louisville that you would, ha you would have that? I think so. I mean, I think, I just think as people, you know, once you get past kind of surface thoughts, I mean, you want to delve deeper into what you really believe or to know more about you know you might even want to say your original source and so I think you know that I find that's very common that um, people my age and older want to really go there really yeah. go to that that deep place and have those deep discussions which is often really hard to have in our culture right I mean, you know, a lot of our conversation in this culture happens on the surface. And so I think pub theology offers an opportunity to have a deep discussion about, you know, religious and spiritual themes that, that really matter to our souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would affirm that too. I, my, my sense is that every, when you do, when you can sort of break through the surface, that mm -hmm. the 20-somethings, 30-somethings that I know really have a ri really a fertile, rich kind of reflection mm -hmm. time and a, a, you know, a, in surprising places and ways mm -hmm. they, that, that comes out. And uh, I've been, been intrigued by that in just what little. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that also um, my experience is for myself and I'm 
I hope I'm not transferring that onto others, is that um, the people that I know, they really want to have an intentional life, um, to live authentically mm -hmm. into their faith. And so for that to be both intentional and authentic, it's important to know kind of where you really stand. Mm -hmm. um, what is your what is your idea of God? Who is this? Uh, who is Jesus? You know, what does the Holy Spirit really do? Um, those are kind of integral questions mm -hmm. to get to the core. Mm -hmm. And that in intentionality and authenticity seems to me to be connected also to community. Yes, that that's what helps someone mm -hmm. go deep and live in a way that's true for them is having some folks around them that understand that, not necessarily are doing it in the same way. Well, yeah, because I, I mean, my job there is really to facilitate discussion. Um, I don't go and necessarily teach. I don't necessarily say, this is what you should believe. I just say, okay, this is what people have said over the centuries. You know, what do you think? <laughs> you know, or this is, you know, or play devil's advocate or just, you know, kind of keep the conversation to a very open place so that everyone can kind of just own whatever it is that they need to say or own whatever it is that they need to take take on themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm going back a little bit in time. I'm remembering the, um, I've forgotten now what you called it, but the, um, the millennial. Oh yes, Bowls what did we call it? Event. Eutucharist. Eutuch what did we call it? The, um, Global aid? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm just missing. Yeah. Yeah. So that there was out of out of this group and conversation that's been happening was a desire to do something that might um, uh, impact the community, mm -hmm. might make a statement about some things that are important. Right. Um, I, we had the U2 Eucharist, which is a Eucharist with the music of U2, and but we also had uh, we had a silent auction. And the money that we raised, uh, I think half of it went to PCM, Paducah Cooperative Ministry, and the other half went to the purchase of, um, what do they call it? It's like a well, but it's like a... Mm -hmm. Merry-go-round. Like a merry-go-round, yeah. yeah. The kids so are that, pumping water while yes. they're spinning So when that. the kids can play, they're actually pumping clean water for their community. So we had a silent auction. Then we also had sort of booths and children's activities about you know, how do children live in different parts of the world? And um, part of the millennial development goals um, is to end extreme poverty. And so um, just kind of an awareness of, of that and how you can make an impact in that just here in Paducah. You know, you don't necessarily need to um, go to Africa. Um, you can do a lot right here. Um, Project AIDS Orphan. Mm -hmm. um, is, is here in Paducah and they do amazing work um, and so yeah that was really fun because it kind of came out of that community of pup theology saying let's let's do something let's let's do something about this um, and yet your I think your group is very much led by the spirit because you're mm -hmm. not you don't have a, a structure or a calendar you're not forcing anything mm -mm. you just kind of keep going to them with you know what is of genuine interest to mm -hmm. you where are you with this? And then you just keep working. And not all that. of it is so serious. I mean, we do have our annual trip to Holiday World, <laughs> which is of vital importance. Ah, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Being that it is the oldest uh, amusement park, I think, or theme park. It's the oldest theme park in the country. So mm -hmm. we also go to Holiday World. Mm -hmm. you well, know? Uh, and that's Santa Claus, <laughs> Indiana. So mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's important. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> well, you know, I'm finding it interesting. I, I've just been... Um, coming up, uh, upon some articles recently about the lack of interest <coughs> on the part of uh, folks maybe 16 to 35, not just, not just a <coughs> lack of interest in Christianity, but even um, suspicion or mm -hmm. um, a feeling of um, concern about um, the gap between what Jesus was about and what Christians seem seems to be about. Um, and so I'm finding that interesting that, you know, maybe nationwide there's um, suspicion about mm -hmm. Christians and yet you've got this group for whom um, the life of the spirit and connection with faith is um, very compelling. Mm -hmm. I, 
well, how do you explain that? Well, I think it has to do with authenticity. I think, you know, especially my experience of my generation is, you know, they want to get to the core message of Jesus. And so they kind of look at the church and they say, well, the church isn't really doing what I'm seeing here in Scripture. And so that creates a problem with the, the institution, um, with the church. That doesn't necessarily mean they have a problem with religion or spirituality mm -hmm. or, or faith. And um, so I think what a pub theology, I mean, people, you know, some people that come don't, don't attend church on Sunday. Um, that's that's okay. There's kind of a recognition that you know, God is leading you on on your journey, but I think it has to do with that authenticity. Mm -hmm. I think people can spot when things are inauthentic very quickly, and I don't know if if if, if you can get buy-in from that age group. Yeah, uh, and don't you think connected to that is the whole notion of questioning mm -hmm. that is uh, really really a part of the life of most 18, 16 mm -hmm. to 30 year olds. This, mm -hmm. I mean, I think developmentally, mm -hmm. they, uh, and there is that, that time of the dark night of the soul, the time when you really are required, you're hardwired almost to pull the faith apart, the faith that's been given mm -hmm. to you by your family, by your friends, by the church itself. There's a time to pull it apart and question and to think mm -hmm. and to wonder and to ask and to mm -hmm. doubt and to, you know, and I think the church has been the weakest in responding. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to offer pat answers to, mm -hmm. or we're tempted to. We don't yeah. always. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's, there's a need maybe in the church to appear kind of totally you know, flawless and and fit into this perfect structure. But at the same time, I mean, if we take Jesus's parable seriously about knocking to open the door and searching to find, then that can leave us open to saying, God is truth, you know, and God is going to lead us. There's a, There has to be a trust, I think, on the part of the church that God really does lead people right. to truth. And Through, uh, all kinds of depths. Yeah, yeah. And, and through all kinds of depths, and even sometimes you have to go through all kinds of darkness, and you have to face those doubts in order for God to finally say, "This is the light." Um, you know, look at look at Jesus. This is His life. Um, this is what I'm what I want for you. Um, and so I think you know from that part, the church actually, the, the institution, it almost requires them to have faith. To have right. trust, mm -hmm. to allow people to really go to a place of doubting and, and questioning as part of their own development right. into who God has called them to be. So, mm -hmm. any uh, any things you've sort of gleaned? <clears throat> is, let's say there's hundreds out there that would like to start a ministry for, with their young adults. Any uh, any sort mm -hmm. of tips? Any any things you've seen about young adults that uh, are as as one and uh, you think ought to be honored and particularly yeah they'll they'll tell you what what they want to do and if you try something you have to just be open to it to fail it's like either the spirit picks it up or the spirit doesn't pick it up and so you know and, and they need to i find have ownership of whatever is going on um Again, I see my role as a facilitator and not necessarily as the person in charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a hands-on age group. Yeah, I mean, you know, w w you know, and, and I, I ask the group all the time, it's like, what do we want to talk about? Is anything coming up for anyone theologically? Um, or what do we want to do? You know, I offer ideas and they either say, you know, we hate that idea, absolutely not, or we love, ide we love that idea, let's do it. So um, I, I think it's just to come from them mm -hmm. is probably the most mm -hmm. important thing and not to over, think that you need to over-program because um, I mean, young adult life is, is very busy. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
to me there's a sense of sort of also creating that space and encouraging to have Sabbath. You know, just to kind of put some basic self-care. What does that look like? To be intentional about their family life. Um, that, that I think is also important. Yeah. Well, and I think too, you know, to go back to the, the word authenticity, I think, um, you know, you've created an, an environment where, where people are free to go deep with a, with a question or a doubt or a hesitation. Mm -hmm. And that would seem to me to be uh, a, a key part of any, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. of any group. If, if, if there's a press to um, stick close to doctrine, that would seem to me to be a killer for a group like that. Yeah, I think you have to um, trust. You have to, I think, really at the core of my ministry with young adults has been just a real willingness to trust God that the conversation goes where the conversation needs to go and to be open, um, not to necessarily agree with them, but to be open in guiding that conversation. Um, and, and just a real understanding that, and a real trust that, you know, that God is leading this group and that everyone is on this journey. And so, you know, they just, we all kind of muddle together, mm -hmm. you know, and try to be as faithful as we can and live out of our lives, out of that place of authenticity and truth mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and faith. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, so these are the, these are the folks that, um, you know, upon which the, mm -hmm. the church is building. <coughs> now, how do you, how do you see the folks in this um, demographic affecting Christianity and the life of the church? in years to come, or do you think about that? Um, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if I really think about it. I know that we're, overall, my feeling is that we're less worried about um, institutions. We don't necessarily, a lot of young adults, I don't think, necessarily have a, connect, a strong denominational connection. Um, but I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how it's how that's all going to play out in the church at large. I'm, yeah, I can't. I don't know. That's okay. It's yeah, okay. it's not going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's not. There's not a brand name loyalty though, mm -hmm. as such. Uh, it's no. Not a branded, branded uh, business anymore. Mm -hmm. It really is. A, yeah. A, in the moment produce and mm -hmm. connect in lively It's, it's really the community, I, yeah. I think, that's at the core than your denomination or mm -hmm. identification or label mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. anything like that. Well, the community and how life-giving it is. Yes. Because it isn't just the community no. for the sake of community. No, it's, it's that this community is real and authentic and life-giving and supportive and, and really trying to live out the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think that, you know, a lot of people my age will look at the church and say, you know, what is the church doing? I mean, Jesus lived this radical life, and the church doesn't seem to be all that radical. And so what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What for you um, personally, pastorally, has been the greatest gift that's come out of this particular part of your ministry? Um, I really, um, it's very enriching for me personally to do pub theology um, because um, it's not, there's not, I'm just opening this forum. And so for me, that's very life-giving to kind of hear and interact with people where they are on a deep level. And so I find that it really enriches me. It, it feeds me. Um, kind of midweek, um, just in the working of God, and in, and the, we just have amazing moments of community. You know, you never know who's really going to show up or what's going to happen, and just kind of an opportunity for me to just practice that, just open to the spirit of of the evening of what God has planned for us. Um, that it's just it's just a real joy, actually, for me. 
What about you? Tell us how you sort of came to the faith and or to the to the uh, priesthood as well. Well, um, I grew up in Louisville um, at Christ Church Cathedral, which is the Episcopal Cathedral in downtown Louisville. And when I was about eight years old, I kind of thought, I think I'm supposed to be a priest. And um, I really loved church, and I really loved worship and liturgy and, and kind of just dwelling in God's mystery as a kid. I was a weird, strange little kid. And um, I remember people who were, you know, much, much older than me at eight years old would say, oh, you're going to be a priest. And I would say, oh, you people. But I kind of knew still deep inside and always have just been part of that community. Um, and finally, when I was in college, I was like, all right, fine. You know, um, we started discernment process. And here, here I am. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. It's Fairly just, natural kind of progression. It's been, mm -hmm. yeah, I was kind of like, you know, I've always known what I was supposed to do. And, and kind of along the way, God has given me different mentors and different people to kind of lead me along. Um, uh, one of those people was Jerry Wolf, who's now the Bishop of Rhode Island, who was my priest growing up. And just, I mean, in terms of worship experiences, it was just so rich and so deep and so inclusive of me, even as a little kid of just being respected and seen as a full member of the mm -hmm. church, um, which I think has was kind of the core of it. I had a youth minister, I um, actually went to a Methodist youth group for a while, um, Mark Hogg, who just really taught me, I think, about mission um, and about outreach and, um, uh, and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so it's just been kind of very very natural and it's the same kind of organic process in in your life I think that that you then bring to pub theology and, oh, and yeah, to your ministry yeah. in in Western Kentucky in general but yeah. um, the, I think for me um, the exciting thing in your ministry is knowing that 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 spirit's going to be doing all kinds of interesting things that you're not programmed you know and structured that you really are kind of a happening as as you, as you minister kind of in that well that's the hope way. anyway yeah. yes yeah well ellen we're um we're out of time but um my guess is that um all kinds of amazing things are going to be happening oh, in uh, in in your life and in your ministry in western kentucky and we uh celebrate the gift of the spirit that you uh bring to all of us mm -hmm. i want to thank you for being here ellen. well thank you for having yep. me and for everything you do Good to be together, Gregory. And you, and you. We want to thank you for joining us here at Reflections. Do uh, join us again. You can watch us online by going to paducah2.org. And we just would invite you with Paducah Cooperative Ministry, however you can, whenever you can, and what way you feel stirred to do God's work with human hands. Shalom. Shalom.